So we're going to lay out a plan and hopefully none of it's new, but maybe this time it'll be a little bit more clear. The short version here is just, hey, here's some gold. Some of this made sense and some of it didn't. But unfortunately, the way mistakes work is sometimes you have to make them before you can spot them. So repeat topic done differently. You might be just starting out buying gold. Maybe you're just researching the idea. Maybe you've been doing it for years, but regardless of how far in you are, this is still the most important part of the whole topic. There are a few things you should be thinking about before you buy in the first place, and some of the most important ideas aren't going to affect you until you go to sell. So that kind of thing is easy to overlook in the front end because you're not thinking about selling, you're thinking about buying. Well, that can be an easy mistake to make. Just ask me how I know. Now what I've found is there might be 99 plans for buying gold, some of them even good, but if you take bits and pieces from each of those plans, it's no longer a plan. So I'm not going to tell you that my way is the only way to go about this, but I will tell you that I found a right way to do it and I've also found a wrong one. So before we get back to it, a quick thanks to my channel sponsor, SD Bullion. If you're looking to buy online, they're great. If you're new, you can even get gold or silver for spot. SDBullion.com slash new. So the first thing that I'm going to say about buying gold is that I don't see it as an investment. To me, this stuff is savings. And the reason that I would start there is that the trigger for a lot of us to look into gold in the first place is sometimes some kind of planning scenario. A scenario that ranges from a stock market crash to an all-out Mad Max world. You're going to see that. You're going to hear that. So it's easy to come in hot thinking that if you don't have a pile of gold and silver, well, you run the risk of losing everything. So let's put all the fire and brimstone out of our minds. There are strange people online telling strange stories. Let's just look past it. The way that I think we should approach this is pretty simple. Personally, I buy gold a little bit at a time with money that I've freed up from suspicious needs. So extra streaming services, nights out on the town, fancier cars, anything I don't really need, I try to pull that back into my budget for gold. Now this video is about buying it, so it makes sense to look at where the money is coming from in the first place. So for me, I budgeted a monthly purchase. If you just want to get in, buy some gold and get back out, well, I would say just think of that more as savings than as some kind of big investment. So let's get specific for a minute. The price of gold can be split into two factors, the spot price and the premium. The spot price is the value of the gold itself determined by trading levels. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, more or less, that price is consistent. And gold is dollar denominated, so there's going to be a fluctuation between currencies, but the gold content of these coins should be worth the same amount anywhere in the world. Now, the second part of price is premium, and that's the amount that you pay above spot. So you think of that as a retail markup. Now, the premium is important because most people are going to buy and sell from the same place. When you buy from an online dealer or a local shop, you might pay a premium of anywhere between 3 and, say, 20%. Now, if you sell to a similar shop, you're going to find that the buyback is significantly less. So what's significantly less? Well, it depends on what you buy. And that's probably why most of you are here, what most of you are probably interested in anyway. So let's get into it. We're going to talk about four things. The metal, the form, the mint, and the size. So for metal, that's probably the first thing we want to decide. We're talking about silver, gold, platinum mainly. This video focuses on gold. Now, there are a few big reasons that I prefer gold to other precious metals. But to stay on topic, I'll just say gold has lower premiums. For form, that's going to be coins or bars, and you could say scrap or jewelry or something else. But we're starting out here. We need to stay focused. I think you should keep it simple. You should choose between coins or bars, coins and bars. I like coins personally because they're easier to authenticate. They're also a little bit easier to sell. And then for mints, I think you should always start with your regional mint. So whoever's closest. Here in the United States, it's the U.S. mint. And I'm going to include Royal Canadian Mint as a close second. They're just over the border. And then throw in the Royal Mint and Perth Mint as honorable mentions. Now, there are others. And of the seven or eight top coins to consider, those four mints that I just mentioned, that'll get you five of them. For size, you have a lot of options. But... Because we're early in this, this is early advice, we're going to focus 
on one ounce and then one half, one quarter and one tenth ounce fractional sizes. And that gives us a pool of options so we can start talking about premiums. Premiums, again, that's how much we're going to have to pay over the spot price of gold every time we buy. So what have we been looking at here? Well, American Gold Eagles, Gold Buffaloes, Canadian Gold Maple Leafs. The Eagles, one ounce and quarter ounce. The Maples and the Buffaloes, one ounce coins. Now, if I was starting out today, what you see on the desk here would be my options, but that's just me. There are strong cases to be made for Britannias or Krugerrands, Kangaroos, Philharmonics. There are also cases to be made for gold bars, cases for series coins from big mints, even cases for U.S. pre-33 gold or old European gold. But all of that really depends on your specific situation. So let's take a quick look at premium. The premium on one ounce gold eagles and buffaloes, it's around five and a half percent. For gold maple, it's three and a half percent, give or take about one percent. I'm just going to show you the size difference here. The premium on a quarter ounce gold eagle right now is about twelve and a half percent. Quarter ounce coins from other mints, you can find them for lower. We'll use nine percent as a typical premium for quarter ounce Britannias or Krugerrands. 10th ounce coins, they're going to range from about 16% to 28%. So things are getting pretty serious when you're buying at that size. The smaller the coin, the higher the premium. The half ounce size, for whatever reason, is kind of hit or miss. Usually, though, they're about the same as the quarter ounce premiums. So let's get a seventh inning stretch here. What's different from the last time that I ran through a plan like this? Well, premiums on fractional eagles have definitely come down. And last year, I think the community probably got a little bit of a flash of what can happen in a buyer's market. We saw smaller dealers heavy on inventory. They weren't all buying. And I even had the largest online dealer on the planet, I believe, decline to buy a series coin that I had bought from them the year prior. So a lot of the rationale that I put into the plan that I put out in 2020 on why you might limit your choices to the most popular options, well, we got some new evidence on why. Now that said, there are still a lot of good choices with gold. You have a lot of people making good cases for whatever it is that they prefer, but the cases aren't as strong if you start to mix them together. So your plan shouldn't be a mix of 12 different plans. And I don't think that there's a good case to be made for buying whatever comes along or something different every time, regardless of what seems hot here on YouTube or Reddit or wherever, unless you're just doing this for fun. And in that case, just, I guess, grab whatever catches your eye. If you want what's efficient though, what's easy and what gives you an exit plan, I would say come up with a short list. And that's what I'm showing on the table here. So I've got a mess here. Let me clean this up and let me get really specific. If I was going to come up with a simple plan, say I wanted 12 ounces of gold. I would want 10 one ounce gold buffaloes, eagles, or maple leaves, and then eight quarter ounce gold eagles. And the most important part of that plan is just that I wouldn't have a lot of options. I wouldn't have 12 different coins or 50 different coins, 50 different forms of gold, different mints, different sizes, different purity that somehow add up to around 12 ounces. Because if I went to sell that pile, the math and the simple logistics of selling it just goes out the window. It gets way more complicated. So let me just give you a few more things to think about before we close this down. Maybe you caught that I ignored purity the first time around. These eagles on the desk, do 22 carat. The buffaloes and the maples are 24 carat. And most buyers simply do not care. If you go strictly from sales figures, the American gold eagles are the most popular gold coin sold worldwide. Canadian gold maple leaf here, that's the second. So we can't say that 24 karat gold coins are more popular than 22. It just isn't true. The Eagle is 91.67% pure, but it still has one ounce of pure gold. So it's simple. That remaining silver and copper in the alloy, that just makes the Eagles harder and slightly heavier. So I'd say don't get caught up in that. But if you don't want 22 karat gold for whatever reason, you have plenty of options. You have buffaloes, maple leaves, Britannias, kangaroos, philharmonics. You're covered. Okay, so the last point is about price. Let's start off with which size to buy. You caught that one ounce is the cheapest in terms of premium percentage. One ounce bars, they're even cheaper than coins. So there are two things to think about here. You have the overall cost at the time of the purchase, and then you have the buy to sell spread. So the first part of that is just a simple case of what you're comfortable buying each time. Maybe you don't wanna spend $2,100 on one of these one ounce coins every time. 
550 for one of these quarter ounce coins, that might be a better option for you. But as a note, you're going to be spending $2,200 for the same gold content if you go the route of buying these quarter ounce coins. It could be 2,500 if you're buying 10th ounce coins. So if you're patient, you'll save a lot of money buying larger coins less often. Okay, so that's premium on the front end. The second part is the buy to sell spread. I can sell a Buffalo to a dealer for one to 2% over spot. So if I'm buying it at 5.5%, selling it at 1.5%, that's a spread of 4%. This gold maple leaf will sell for spot. So if I buy one of these at 3.5% premium, it seems like a better deal at the time. Well, I can only sell it for spot. That's a 3.5% spread. So slightly better, but again, only slightly. And that 3 to 4% buy to sell spread, that's pretty common for what I buy. A one ounce gold bar, it might cost 2 or 2.5% two in premium. So again, you can save on the front end, but I would get 1 or 2% back of spot in a sale. So again, similar case, 4% buy to sell spread. Okay, so here's the tough truth on fractional. Most local shops that I know give the same buyback price for a coin regardless of size. So if they were to give 2% over spot for a one ounce gold eagle, most of them don't do much better for fractional. So the buy to sell spread gets really wide on fractional coins. I found that to sell them for what they're worth, I typically have to find a private buyer and that really slows things down. That, or I just have to be okay with the lower buyback price. Now, hypothetically, I could sell any coin I have to a private buyer for more than I could sell it to a dealer, but it's way more work. I don't want that. I want an easy sale, not a hard one. I definitely don't want lots of hard sales. Okay, so let's put all this together. The advice that I would give to myself, my 17 year younger self, would be to choose from a small list of options. I would focus on one ounce and quarter ounce coins, quarter ounce both for the flexibility and just to get comfortable with the idea and one ounce to save on premium. If my wife runs across a gold bar when she's out at Costco, well, great, I'll take it. If I run into a dragon coin, I just have to have, yep, I want that too. But for my primary stack, I want everything as uniform as possible. Okay, so look, plain talk. I told you earlier that the tips I have, the advice I'd give my younger self came from mistakes that I've made. You saw my side quest coins in the intro, everything in that Pelican case. I can still justify some of them. The Lunars are going to appreciate the Marcus Aurelius Roman Aureus in there. That's something I've wanted for decades, but most of what's in there was just fun at the time. Gold I paid too much for, or I didn't really think through, and it falls outside of my plan. So does that matter? Well, for me, I plan to roll a portion of my gold holdings into a property when I retire. Property is not cheap, so I'm going to have to sell a lot. So if I wanted to sell, say, 40 ounces of gold, I just made that up, I could sell 40 eagles in a single trip. I cannot sell 40 ounces of gold for my random pile in that single trip. I would have to sell a few at a time, and they'd be considerably more complicated to sell. And I spent more on those coins at the time. So that's the important part, the part that most of us don't talk about, and definitely the part that most of us don't think about when we're buying. We don't think about what it's going to take to sell. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, it's not my problem. I'm going to hand them down to my kids. Well, that problem doesn't go away. They're going to have a lot more trouble than you would. So whatever I choose personally before I buy a single coin, I'm going to call up a local shop if I have access to one, and I'm going to ask them what they would pay to buy back whatever it is I choose. That's an easy call and an important call. Now, you can sell to online dealers as well, but I think that it's important to know where the exit doors are in the event of an emergency, and that's going to be a local buyer, again, if you have access to it. That felt like a really long talk. I have a headache. Hopefully, that final point wasn't buried in there. Thinking about the sale really is the most important part. It's a good place to call it good. So let us know what you're up to. If you have any advice for new buyers, drop them in the comments as well. And then while you're there, be sure to hit the like button. If you found any of this interesting, be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.